Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my house. I'm making some progress here and I'm going to be installing some more crown molding. If you've been following the last few videos, you know I've been doing that here and I actually have another room that has two 45 degree angles. So the cuts would be somewhere around 22.5 degrees. And I thought this is a perfect time to test out a new tool. I am a tool junkie myself, like many of you are. And if we see a new tool, hey, we want to test it out and see how it's going to work. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out this tool right here. This is the Bora Miterix Miter Duplicator. This was not sent to me. This was not, this is not a sponsored video. I just purchased this off Amazon a couple days ago and it came in and we're going to give it a test and see what I think of it really. It looks like they thought of everything. I'm curious to see how this is going to work out for me. I'm going to use this mostly for obviously trim and doing miters, bringing two pieces together, but I could see how this would be useful also if you were a floor or tile guy. So I'm not really going to put my input on that since I don't do that, but it looks like it'd be useful for that as well. So let's get right into it. I'll show you how this tool works and let you know what I think about it. So here's a quick overview of this tool right here. It has an adjustment knob right here. When you turn it counterclockwise, it loosens. And when you turn it clockwise, it tightens up so you can have the jig tighten to the miter that you're trying to duplicate. So we'll loosen it up and these arms will come out from the sides. And as you move one, they move simultaneously. So whatever you're matching up, whatever miter you're matching, this tool is adjusting perfectly for it at each time. So for an inside miter, if you want to find an inside miter, you'll just push this into the wall and push the arm. You can push one arm and the other one will hit simultaneously like I mentioned. Once you have that miter, the wall, let's pretend there's a wall right here that it stopped up against. You would tighten the adjustment knob here and then this right side here is detachable. It's the only side of the tool that's detachable that will come off and that now becomes irrelevant from here on out for this particular miter. If you have a miter that is on the left hand side of the zero degree mark on your miter saw, what you're going to do is hold this, this arm right here up against the fence of the saw and then dial your blade in so it lines up right next to this, the actual body of the tool. Just come down with your blade and then line it up until it's zero clearance with this tool here, with the body of the tool. And once you're, you're perfectly lined up with that, you're perfect up against the fence with the arm, you'll just lock that down. And that will read, this is obviously just an example, but that is 27 degrees right there. Now what we can do, we, we know that miter, obviously two pieces come together and they match up. So you don't really have to, to get the other miter, you don't have to put this on the saw and then line it up. All you got to do is remember 27 degrees. Once you find that first miter, you're done with the tool. It's that simple. Now this is pretty cool because there's really no calibration that can go wrong. Since it's a duplicator jig, it's not like it can get knocked over and could get uncalibrated, right? Like something like my Starrett miter finder here. I know a lot of people have had some issues with these. They say that once they bought them, they were reading a little bit off. Mine has been perfect from the factory from day one, but you can't adjust it right here. So you would have to do that. So that is an advantage of this. Um, one disadvantage of this that I see right away is that there's more steps involved. Whereas with this, I would just take this up, throw it in a, in a corner, all right, boom, I got 27 degrees or whatever it is, and then I'm done. There's no more steps. I put this back in my pocket or tool belt, and I go out to the miter saw, 27 degrees, I'm flying, right? So this is, seems to be more efficient, but this seems like it would have a little bit more um, precision because the arms are so long. So that's how you do an inside cut. And then for an outside cut, what you're gonna do, the arms move simultaneously, like I mentioned, but these pieces of like, they look like aluminum, tiny aluminum extrusions. They slide up on these black arms here. And as they're sliding up, that's gonna give you your outside miter right here. So you'd go push this up against your miter right there and you would lock that down. So once you lock that down, you lock that down again, the right side of the tool detaches. It's always gonna be the right side, becomes irrelevant. 
Then you can push this back down. So now you've, this is perfect again. Then you go to your miter saw and let's say we're going to make this cut right here on the right side of the zero degree mark of the saw. So this right here is zero clearance with that. And one thing we were thinking about, you can always just find, you can always put the body of the tool against the fence. In the instructions it says you can do it like this, but I mean, obviously, if you know that since the arms move at the same time simultaneously, if this one's 36 degrees like it was, then you know the other half of that miter is gonna be 36 degrees. It's kind of a no-brainer. So I think if you just keep the body of the tool against the fence and use this for the blade, it seemed to me a lot easier than lining the blade up with this piece of plastic here. So that's what I would recommend. So we'll take it inside, use it in a real life situation, installing this outside crown molding corner, and then let you know what we think about it. So here we are up here, we've got two corners that are about 45 degrees, so we'd have 22.5 miters roughly. Um, we've got this crown we're putting in, I've got this loosely in here, and it's, I'm just waiting so I can adjust it perfectly when I come with this next piece. So using this tool, we're gonna wrap it around this corner, and we're gonna wrap it around this corner. What, I'll can, what I can do, since it's an outside miter, we're gonna raise these arms out like it tells us to, and then wrap it around this angle here. Now I'm coming down four inches because that is where my crown wall projection is. So I'll get a, the most accurate reading there. So I'll hold that up against there tight, tighten this down to where it can no longer move. It's locking the jig in place. And this will be our miter duplication right here. I can slide this back down remove the right side and go set this up on our saw. Now what we're going to do in this situation, since this is our first time using it, I'm going to go dial this into the saw, putting the plastic part of this up against the fence of the saw, dial the blade in zero clearance with this aluminum part, and then we're going to cut two samples at that whatever angle this is, and then we're going to bring those two samples up and see what it gives us here. So again, that arm, we're done with that. We'll put the plastic part. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna remove this too for now. That's the great thing about my crown jig, guys. You can just remove it and put it back on, no adjustment needed. So again, body against the fence, extrusion against the blade. So we'll dial, we'll zero clearance this. And we are zero clearance right there at 24 degrees. So we got 24 degrees right here. But once you know one miter, you know the other. So we'll get this put away now. And then we'll make two sample cuts at 24 degrees, take them up there, and then show you guys what that looks like. So we have two 24 degree miters. They're obviously gonna look very good right here in my hand. The true test is how do they look on the wall. So we're gonna go up there and check that out. And they need to be about right there. That is pretty much dead on. Yeah, I would say that it's a good tool right there. And just to check it out, we're gonna compare it with this. One other thing about this too, that's kind of a disadvantage yeah, we are right on 24. That's pretty spectacular. Uh, when you're doing miters, you're looking at this one, not this one. This is a single cut. So look at this one, we're right on 24. That is pretty, pretty cool that this thing just dialed us in on the saw to 24, and then this thing spits out 24. So we know this is working really good. I'm really happy to see that. 
because now I feel like I can trust this more. This is probably actually more trustworthy <laughs> because what I was about to say is that whenever you hold this on here, like you better make sure you don't move it a little bit when you take it off. That's why if I can, I like to read it in place. But for the sake of the video, I was just showing you how it looks. Um, so we don't have to put the camera up under here. All right. Seems pretty easy, easy enough to use. You can hold it with one hand and tighten it with another hand. So right there it's tightened. And let's see what we're at. We are at, looks like 25 degrees there. Now I have a 25 degree miter that's gonna be coming on this side of this middle piece and 24 degrees on the other side. Then I'll have a coped piece that is gonna have a, one coped end and then a 24 degree miter there. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this 25 degrees, swing this all other way 24 degrees and just cut this up to what it told me to do as far as uh, miter degrees. This is a pretty cool little thing about this fence too. I can just line that miter up right there with that tape perfectly. And I don't have to worry about holding it. And that was 34 and 3 sixteenths. And we're going to do that one at 24 degrees. And then for our coped piece, I'm going to leave it long, which is usually what I'll do if I have a cope to an outside miter. That way I can just make sure that cope is nice and tight and then just mark it in place without even using the tape measure. So I'm going to make this long and cope that out with the grinder here. So now we're gonna do our dry fit. Make sure this thing is good to go. And then we can CA glue it together like always. Damn, that looks awesome. Oh, hold on, let me adjust it a little bit more. There we go. Whenever you hear the whistle, that means that it's perfect. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm telling you, man, angle finders and miter duplicators, and this is what separates just pros from Joes, I guess you would say. And everyone has access to these tools. I mean, the tool does the work for you. Obviously, there's some experience and stuff involved with what you need to adjust and so on and so forth but um, man you can do this stuff with the right tools man it just doesn't get old when you see these things come together it's it just doesn't get old all right time to glue it up got my little two ounce right here Handy, put a nice little bead on here. So you can see here, 
Got some nice little bit of squeeze out coming out there so that joint should hold for its entire life. So I'm going to go ahead and do the fun part, which is installing this piece. And moving on to that long piece over there. And I'm going to leave this loose because I may need to have some flexibility when I glue that one up. There we have it. We can move on to this next piece here and keep finishing up this room. So I think we proved it. There you have it. This tool works great. I did want to check it with this just for the sake of the video to see how accurate it was. But I think if you got this tool, you wouldn't even need this. But I'm also of the opinion that you need both because why not? Just have two tools. You never know when you're going to need either one. I think it's good. I think the results are pretty obvious by the looks of this corner. We're going to continue on with the rest of this room. We've got this wall right here left to do and we're not doing anything on that wall because I may add a window there. I don't know. I've never done that before, but my wife really wants a window there or we may just put like a really cool accent wall here, which that will be another video. But hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you're interested, check this thing out. I'll have a link in the description to the Amazon link. And let me know what you think of it or if you've ever used this down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.